Welcome to this Quick Take Rapid Learning Module. Today's topic, negotiations. Should you justify your price? Tim is a consultant. He's ready to close a big engagement with his prospect, Martha. They just need to agree on a price. Tim would like to get at least $175,000, but he needs some negotiating room, so he decides to open at $190,000. That's a lot of money, so Tim reminds Martha of all the extras he's throwing in, a benchmarking study, three follow-up meetings, and unlimited phone consultations. Tim gets the business, but he doesn't get his price. He ends up agreeing to $160,000, and he has to offer additional services even to get that. What happened? Was Martha simply a tougher negotiator than Tim? Or did he do or say something that undermined his price? In this quick take, you will learn a critical error that can undermine price negotiations. When it makes sense to offer an explanation or justification to a request, and when it doesn't. And the best thing to say after you put your initial offer on the table. Research suggests that Tim made a critical error when he presented his price. He reminded Martha of all the value she was getting for her money. But how could that be bad? After all, salespeople are often taught to provide a reason when they ask a customer for something, a meeting, a referral, or a purchase. That advice comes from a well-known experiment which found that people are more likely to agree to a request if it's accompanied by a reason. The researchers approached people in a university building who were about to use a photocopier and asked to cut ahead of them. When experimenters simply asked to go first, 60% agreed. But when they offered a reason, 93% of people said yes. Based on these results, salespeople have often been advised to offer an explanation or justification when they ask a buyer to do something. But most people don't know the rest of the story. The researchers also found that justifications only work when the stakes are low. When the request was likely to cause some inconvenience, for example when they asked to make 20 copies instead of just one, offering a reason didn't make people more likely to agree. In fact, a more recent experiment found that when you're engaged in a significant price negotiation, explanations and justifications can backfire. This experiment involved negotiations over the price of an apartment. For one group of subjects, the researchers presented a price and then justified it. They pointed out that the building had an elevator or was in a desirable neighborhood. For another group, they simply named the price and then remained silent. The buyers who weren't given a justification didn't bargain as hard and ended up agreeing to pay more. The reason the justifications backfired, the researchers suggest, is that they made buyers feel like they were being pushed into a corner, that the seller was trying to strong arm them into agreeing. So the buyers pushed back by coming up with things they didn't like about the apartment, such as the lack of parking or a washing machine. It was a way of trying to take back control of the discussion. That's what happened to Tim. The more he extolled the benefits of his proposal, the more Martha felt coerced. To take back control, she started thinking of what was wrong with the proposal. Why only three follow-up visits? What would she really get from the benchmarking study? Before long, she'd convinced herself that Tim should come down, way down, on his price. If Tim had simply quoted his price and shut up, the study suggests, Martha wouldn't have felt pushed and probably wouldn't have pushed back as hard. Now there is a time to include justifications, not during the price discussion, but much earlier, during the value discussion. Tim had done that, but he gained nothing and risked much by reopening the discussion during the price negotiation. In fact, the best thing to say after you present your price is nothing at all. Thanks for watching.